another day, another tragedy at YouTube. Right, what's up? I'm back with another video. Now, in this video... I'm actually watching uh, JT talk about it on YouTube. YouTube are revi removing verification from creators. Creators that put their blood and sweat into this fucking platform. YouTube is removing their verifications because of things that are confusing and if they're not brand a brand or not the actual person behind the channel. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. What are you doing? Look, I've been on board with you guys. Like I I rarely go against YouTube because a lot of things they've done, I kind of can understand from a certain point, point point of view. But this is ridiculous. Now, I understand taking away people's verification badges, if they're scamming people, always constantly trying to make sales. Like, things that are just, like, you know, scammy and sketchy. Like, if people are doing scammy and sketchy stuff, maybe they've committed a crime. Um, but you, you got YouTube usually deletes their channels anyway. YouTube has gone to the point to where they they're trying to cater to the mainstream companies, these big companies, corporations, which is not smart at all. It it was the content creator that made you guys popular, and for you guys to slap us in the face like this is kind of scary. It makes you think, like, if they deem you not a brand, they may delete your channel in the future. They may delete a lot of your videos in the future if they're not brand safe. At this point, we don't know what YouTube's going to do next, because if they do something as stupid as this and taking away, um, a, like, actual live sub counts and doing abbreviated sub counts, how do we know exactly what YouTube is going to do next we don't really know it's all in the air it's all it's open in the air right now because we don't really know what YouTube is going to do next they just got fined uh, 170 million so they got fined 170 million for apparently violating child protection laws and um, targeting data at kids whatever understandable now kids channels are going to disappear probably or they're not going to be really that many kids channels because you can't make money off of it anymore really and now it's verification badges being taken away this is a very different time for YouTube and then also on top of that it's just I just don't get it dude I don't get why YouTube is doing this. Why? No one asks for this. And you've already removed verification badges from thousands of creators. Me, I'm just thinking, like, once I hit 100K subs, I might as well forget about getting verified. Why get verified if I'm, like, like, I give up? I wouldn't be surprised they took... PewDiePie's verification away from him. Well, I doubt that because they just like openly supported him after his wedding. But think about it like this, dude. And now I have co close contacts with YouTube. I have a couple people I can just actually like hop on and speak to. But this is like out this is outrageous, man. I'm scared, like, if I'm going to even, if YouTube is going to be a thing, like, I can actually grow on it. Like, I mean, I'm growing. I'm, I'm getting viewers. I'm getting the mo the biggest numbers I've ever had, ever. But YouTube ultimately, at this point, kind of chooses what gets recommended in an algorithm and what doesn't. Now, if you guys trying to say, that's not true, that's not true. To a certain extent, yes, watch time and viewership choose what's popular. But at the end of the day, YouTube chooses what channels flourish and don't. If they wanted to cut PewDiePie dry, they could have done it. 
years ago. They just let him stay even after his controversies. And to a certain extent, I did think they were killing this channel, but at the same time, he is too big to not rank in the algorithm because he's so huge. But someone like me, you know, I'm still growing. Of course, I can rank for all kinds of videos because of my subs. Even though my subs don't watch every single video, if I keep uploading, I know I'll be big because I can rank for any video once you grow up to a certain point. My question is, will they ever let another channel as big as PewDiePie, that's an individual that's part of internet culture, be a big thing again? Because after the T-Series thing and after James Charles, after Pro Jared, they've been really gunning to make sure creators can't do certain things anymore. Which is, I guess, is fine. But watching that subscriber battle between T-Series and PewDiePie was amazing. And, and it was a golden, I feel like that was a golden moment for YouTube where the golden age was already gone. You know, <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know what's going to happen to YouTube. At this point, I think it's going to... I don't know, man. It's... At this point, I've thought about, like, quitting. The only thing that's keeping me from not quitting YouTube is because I don't have a viewership there and people like it. And, you know, Instagram is even changing. It's like all these platforms are changing to try to meet these brand safe looks. But it's not, no one wants to sit around and watch. People left TV so they don't have to see fucking gatekeepers try to keep everything clean and fresh and squeaky and fucking controlled. The reason why YouTube was so popular, especially for all these years, is because it's, it's democratized content, but now they are getting similar to the gatekeepers, television, when they are not television. This is technically internet TV. This is the internet. It's free and open and democratized, where people can choose what they want to watch. If people want to watch a guy play fucking video games, so be it. <laughs> if a guy, if someone wants to watch a fucking girl eat noodles, so be it. But YouTube is now making it to where you guys don't even have a choice, the viewer. And I think that's scary. And they want to give you the illusion that you have a choice to watch with an algorithm, but not really. What they do is that based off what you've watched before, the algorithm serves you brand safe, similar content to content you've already watched prior. So if you click on a Power Cynical video, they may show you something similar, but a little bit more brand safe, a little bit more cleaner in their eyes. When viewers should just be getting their subscriptions, a recommendation should come after. Recommendations is a good thing. I'm not hating on recommendations and suggested content. I think it's the most brilliant system. It's how creators grow, in my opinion. It's how you get noticed. It's the fastest way to get noticed. It's how I got noticed. Twitch needs that. Other platforms, like Mixer, needs that. They need a recommendation system where if you upload and pitch your video against another channel to see who wins the click and where you can grow from. I think that's what makes YouTube so revolutionary. You make videos based on keywords, and based on keywords, you get indexed, and then people find videos based on that. I think that's beautiful. There's nothing like it ever in the world. But when you start to manipulate those algorithms and that recommendation system to kind of control what people watch and click is another story. And YouTube knows they're doing this. They're taking celebrity videos, putting them next to creators' videos that are popular on the platform because these celebrities, some of these celebrities literally cannot break through. Like you have PewDiePie who's getting 15 to 20 million views per video max. And then you have Will Smith who moves onto the platform. He's been in international films 
but for some reason on YouTube, he can't break that point. He can't break that threshold. Now, a million views and two million views is great. He's doing well. Some celebrities can't even get subscribers. I guess it's because Will Smith is more hip, and he does like memes and stuff, so the internet's more willing to accept him. But, and then you got Jack Black, which he's pretty cool. But like I said, these celebrities aren't meant to be here. This YouTube grew a different way for a different reason. It is a center, a center of internet content, internet culture. When you try to change it into something else, it's not going to work. You can't take internet culture and try to change it into mainstream culture. It's not going to work. You can integrate mainstream in here. It's cool to have mainstream people here interacting with content creators. But when you start to prioritize them over content creators, the people, the life and blood, the fan base that makes YouTube what it is, it becomes a different kind of, I don't know, it's like, it's like if you took PewDiePie off of here and tried to take, I don't know, someone off of Attack of the Show and replace PewDiePie with someone like off a gaming show that's really big and think that's going to work. It's not how that works. You can't bet on the mainstream companies to run and be part of YouTube. You know, like, they can have their platforms here, but I definitely think you, they should be your last priority, YouTube. You should, your priority should be helping creators who are small, or not even small, just, you know, the ones that are in tune with your brand. You guys think your brand is that shit you showed in YouTube Rewind. That's not your fucking brand. YouTube's brand is broadcasting yourself, being whatever the fuck you want to be. I say iDubs is more in tune with your brand. PewDiePie. Even someone like me. So, like, any creator that's in their fucking basement started like this, playing fucking video games reacting to videos, memes, whatever. Like, these are homegrown content, and people are more likely to support that than someone who... I can't say all celebrities were, like, built with a silver spoon. Like, some of them actually worked for what they got, but they are not what fits YouTube because they are bound by gatekeepers. They have to go to a set, film, read lines, the director has to tell them what to do. YouTube is weird because, and it's different, and this is their, this is your brand, YouTube. Your brand is, these, there's these regular people. They work jobs. They don't have that much money. They go and spend their money to buy equipment, get their apartment set up for the internet. I'm talking about myself here. When I have a car, I have no money. I walk down the street. I work two jobs. Actually, I worked three jobs. I got the money I needed. Started YouTube. Bought the equipment. Come on, guys. This, These are the real YouTubers, bro. These are the true, true YouTubers. The ones that actually grinded and then built. We're pioneers. We built our setups. Started creating content. Putting keywords down uploading consistently, building out, finding ourselves. <sighs> so fucking sad, man. I'm sorry for the rant, but it's just like, come on, YouTube. What the fuck are you doing? You guys trying to change your brand when you can't do that. At the end of the day, your brand is Everyday Joe. Films on this, edits on this or something. I don't know. Uploads and bam. And consistency. <sighs> YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and peace.